Hi everybody, it's Darlene. Welcome to my kitchen. I am sharing with you today some more dinners. Now the last dinner video I did, it was a little, there was a breakfast one in there too, but it was casseroles and I really enjoyed it. And lots of times what I do whenever I am looking for some type of recipe, I'll just type it into Google and then it will come up. So for my family, I really find something with everything kind of in one dish works really best for us instead of cooking like a protein and a vegetable and a carb, um, I really like everything kind of in one pot. So I decided to do a Google search for one pot dinners or meals and usually what happens whenever I do that, um, it will go to a website and it'll say, you know, 50 one pot meals or 25 one pot meals for autumn. And what I do is I will usually click on it and I will go through it. So I decided to do that for this video. So I did my Google search and it came up with, I think, 51 pot meals by a website called Budget Bites. Now, I don't know a lot about the website, but I do know that I've had a lot of success with their recipes. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to pick out a few of these recipes, give them a try, and share them with you. So I will link the initial 50... Um, one pot deal so you can kind of take a look through it and I what I like about it is it gives you a variety so there could be chicken or ground beef or pork or even a vegetarian option I think whenever you kind of look at a whole whack of recipes usually you can find one or two that you think will work for your family so that link will be down below and also the link for all three recipes that I am sharing with you today this recipe is called creamy chicken and gnocchi, calls for four to five chicken thighs. I used six and I went ahead and cut them up, salt and pepper, Italian seasoning, and I am using sweet paprika instead of smoked. Calls for cooking oil and a couple of tablespoons of butter. Calls for yellow onion, I'm using white. It also called for garlic, but I didn't have any. Parmesan cheese, it called for one pound of potato gnocchi dry. Mine isn't quite a pound and it's also refrigerated. Spinach, it called for vegetable broth. I'm using chicken broth and it called for heavy cream. And last week I just happened to pick up this whipping cream. I thought I was gonna make something with it and it was in my refrigerator, but you could definitely use half and half cream or whatever you have in your kitchen. So this is another new addition. This is um, enamel covered cast iron skillet. I purchased it at Costco. They were on sale $40 for a two pack. So I'm adding my two tablespoons, I'm using olive oil, and then I'm gonna let that heat up, and then there is my chicken, and I'm gonna go ahead and season it. Now honestly, you could use whatever chicken you have on hand. If you had rotisserie chicken, if you had some leftover chicken, you could cut it up. You just wouldn't have to cook it, or you could add it at the end. But we're using skinless, boneless chicken thighs. That is what it called for. And it's so funny because when it actually comes to like turkey or chicken as a dinner, I prefer white meat. But when it comes to these types of recipes, I definitely find the flavor of the skinless, boneless chicken thighs is much better. So there's my oil and I'm just following the instructions. It says once it's simmering, add the chicken and cook undisturbed until well browned about three minutes. So I'm just putting it in a single layer and then I'm just gonna go ahead and set my timer for three minutes. While the chicken is cooking, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little bit of prep. So I have my onion, I'm just gonna go ahead and dice it up. And it also calls for the Parmesan cheese, which I'm gonna go ahead and grate. Um, I do find that this is a really nice little splurge. Yes, I have the Parmesan cheese in the shaky jar, but I definitely like to have some fresh Parmesan. I think it's about eight, nine dollars. I usually get it at Walmart. Sometimes it will go on sale at other stores, so keep an eye on it. And I'm using the finer grater for this. I kind of wish I would have went ahead and used the larger grater. I think it would have been a little bit more heavier and would have gotten a lot more cheese. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and try and measure out a quarter of a cup. I bought these little graters at Walmart. I have the small one and I have a larger one. I actually really like them. They're really easy to clean up. I always know where they are. I have a couple of other ones, but I just find these are so simple, especially when I just wanna put a little bit of grated cheese on top of a dish for presentation. I also like to do it on some paper towel because I find you know, I can just kind of shake it into the pan and it makes for easy cleanup. And then I can also compost the paper towels. I don't use them a lot, but I definitely like to use them for, 
grating cheese. So what it says to do now is just stir and brown on the other side for about three more minutes. And that's all I'm going to do. And then it says to remove the chicken from the pan when it's cooked through and leave the fat in the pan. There wasn't too, too much fat on this chicken. And you can see that the pan definitely browned up and it comes really clean easily. I just spray a little bit of Dawn Power Wash, some hot water, and I find that it wipes up really nice. I just find this is a little bit simpler than just a regular cast iron. I've tried it before, but I'm not a big fan. So I went ahead of myself and I added the butter here and I wasn't supposed to. I was just supposed to go ahead and add the onions and cook it, but there wasn't a lot of grease. So I'm glad that I added the onion. Plus, it's going to get all of that flavor at the bottom from the seasoning from the chicken. And then it's going to get into the onion. So it just says to cook the onions until they've softened and the garlic is fragrant. About two minutes. I didn't have the garlic, but it definitely didn't take that long. And then it says add the gnocchi and one tablespoon of butter to the skillet and brown for about two minutes. Now, I think mine was definitely less than a pound. And... That's what I had. I'm not going to worry about it because the gnocchi, it's already pretty much cooked. And I've done this with um, sheet pan dinners too, where I've done it a couple of times and I just go ahead and put it in the oven. I'm going to give you a little bit of a critique here from what I found from the recipe. The gnocchi was good. It's something our family likes, but I wouldn't um, specifically buy it. It's just something I usually have in the refrigerator. What I would do next time if I made this if I make this again, which I probably will, is I would cook pasta, six to eight ounces probably, and then add it in. Also, the one cup of vegetable broth, I found it was almost a little bit too much because I found it was very liquidy. But then again, I didn't have quite the full pound of the gnocchi. And I also found this was a little bit sparse with the ingredients. And I think I would have added some mushrooms in here to give it a little bit more substance to it. So it called for two cups of fresh spinach, and then you just add this and wilt it down. This is when I would have liked to have had a lid on this. So add the spinach. That's what I did. Cook for one to two minutes until the spinach has wilted and the gnocchi has hydrated. Um, I definitely didn't find that it soaked up any of the liquid, but I also didn't use the dry one. I used the refrigerated one. And then I'm just putting the chicken back in here with all of the flavor. Just mixing this all in. Honestly, I think I could have added some more spinach to this. And then you can see the chicken. It's not the prettiest looking <laughs> dish, but it smells really good. And then it calls for half a cup of the heavy cream. Honestly, I think you could almost go with a quarter of a cup of the heavy cream or use the half a cup of heavy cream and half a cup of the um, broth. So that's one of the things that I noticed, because I didn't use the dry pasta, I used the high, the refrigerated, so it was already plumped up a little bit. So then it says to, um, I'm just reading over the instructions because I hadn't made this before and I just wanted to make sure that I didn't miss anything or do anything wrong. So what it says to do is take the skillet off the heat, add the Parmesan to the pan and stir it until it melts, creating a velvety sauce. So I'm stirring in my Parmesan and you can definitely see that it is very liquidy. There's a lot of broth to this. It probably is because I didn't use the dry gnocchi. I know you can buy it on the shelf. So if you did that, you could probably use, um, you know, the full liquid. But if you're doing what I did, um, I would use about half the liquid. And then I'm just adding a little bit more cheese to see if I can thicken it up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and let it sit for a couple of minutes to see if it will thicken up. Now that I've added the Parmesan cheese, it smells really good. So the other thing is I'm just putting a little bit more pepper in here just because I felt like it needed it. Um, we definitely like this is like one of our favorite little things to add to a dish. I find that it makes a really big difference. So anyways, I plated it all up and I knew that our son wouldn't like it. He has autism, a lot of sensory issues when it comes to food. So what I did with his is I added um, a couple of tablespoons of Rayo's marinara and stirred it all up. His actually looked better than ours. But I put a little bit more Parmesan cheese on top, a little bit of parsley. Um, I think this would have been really nice to have some bread with to kind of dip into that sauce, but I didn't. But I think I plated it up in my white bowl is really nice. And then this is what's left. It says that it serves four and it definitely served four. So there was enough here for my husband's lunch, but you can see the sauce. So I would do this again, but I would go ahead and cook pasta and then mix it all up with it. But anyways, this was definitely a hit with our family. It was quick, 
It was easy and everybody loved it. With the addition of the Rayos. This dinner is called cheesy sausage pasta. I'm using some of my ingredients from my first dish, the spinach, chicken broth instead of vegetable broth, white onion instead of yellow onion, calls for a can of Rotel. It calls for Monterey Jack. I'm using Monterey Jack with jalapenos. I thought it would give it a little bit of a kick. It also calls for seven ounces of smoked sausage. I had the sausage in my freezer. And then it calls for eight ounces of wide noodles. It also called for one green onion sliced. I didn't have it this particular day. It's okay. So very simple ingredients. And I think what caught my interest was the picture of this and the fact that it had some smoked sausage. So I'm definitely using more smoked sausage than what the recipe called for. And I'm just going to take a little bit of time to get organized. So I have my cheese shredded one cup. I think it's a little bit more diced my onions, weighed out my wide egg noodles. I was going to use six ounces and then I went ahead with eight, sliced up my sausages, took the can off my rotel, and then also got my measuring cups up. I think I need one and a half cups of chicken broth, so I'm just going to use a half a cup three times. So there's everything ready to go. So I am getting out another um, cast iron enamel skillet that I have. This is a Dutch oven. I got it at Canadian Tire. I love it. So this time I'm not measuring my oil. I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil in here and then I'm also getting organized. I thought I'd share this with you because it's a very simple dinner. So as the oil's getting hot, I just brought everything over that I'm gonna need. So my sausage, my onion, my broth, the noodles and the rotel and all of that is ready to go. And then also my recipes, I like to print them out because I'm spilling stuff on them. Sometimes I write things down afterwards and I'm working on getting them like organized for the ones that I like. So anyways, let's get back to cooking. So there is my pan and I am gonna go ahead and add the sausage. So um, this is where I think I would do things differently. So it says to add the sausage and cook over medium heat until the sausage is well browned. I definitely did that. Now I left the sausage in I would remove it right now because I found the flavor of the sausage, the smokiness of it was just overpowering when I came to present it. So what I would do is I would brown the sausage and do like I did in the first recipe and remove it. And then I would fry, like cook up the onions in the flavoring that was in the bottom of the pan. So that is what I would do differently. Um, I'm also using more sausage than what the recipe called for, but I couldn't imagine using less than what I had because all it would have been was noodles. So anyways, that's my feedback. I definitely would do this again and only use six ounces of the noodles instead of the eight. So you dump in the Rotel. It tells you to keep the liquid and all of that with juices. And then you go ahead and add the uncooked pasta and the chicken broth and you stir until everything is combined. And it says that it's okay if the broth does not fully cover the pasta. So one and a half cups. Now I really thought about using a different type of pasta here, but I also think that egg noodles definitely cook up differently than regular pasta. I could be wrong because I'm pretty sure pasta, you would definitely need the more liquid. So it said I didn't have to worry about covering it up because I knew once I put the lid on, it would steam it and everything too. And then you just let it cook for 10 minutes. So I set the timer for nine. And as you can see, the noodles are plumped up and there's just a little bit of broth at the bottom, not too, too much. And then this is also whenever you are going to add in your spinach. Now it calls for three cups of fresh spinach. I just put the rest of this container in and I wish that I would have used more for my first dish, but I also know that I didn't have anything else planned for this. And we know how much that spinach wilts down. So just says to gently stir the fresh spinach into the pasta, allowing the residual heat to wilt the spinach. And I'm just going to put the lid on because there's a lot in this pan and I didn't want to make a mess. So I let it sit for a minute or two just to try to wilt it down a little bit. It didn't wilt down too much, but definitely enough that I felt like I could incorporate the um, spinach in a little bit better. It's looking pretty good. I think you could definitely add some peppers to this too if you wanted to, if you had some in the refrigerator, whatever vegetables works for your family. I always think it's great to add a little bit more here and there. Honestly, I think even just another can of tomatoes might have been a nice little addition. I don't know about Rotel because it was a little bit spicy. So anyways, I didn't read the instructions. Um, it said to top the pasta with the Monterey Jack cheese and then place the lid on the skillet. 
because the cheese would melt. So I'm like melting, I'm stirring this in and I didn't find it was melting as nice as I thought. And then I went back and read the instructions. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the lid on and then work my way through it. So that's exactly what I'm doing. So anyways, it looks pretty much like it did in the picture. I think my, my egg noodles were a little bit smaller than what there was in the picture, but it smells really good. I like the way that it looks. I like that you can see the sausage and this was really delicious. I liked it, but I did found the smokiness was a little bit overpowering. And the only thing I would change is take the sausage out and then add it whenever you would add the spinach. But everybody really enjoyed this dish too. We had chicken, sausage, and now we're doing ground beef. Many of you are probably able to give me some feedback because I'm making easy American goulash. It looked really simple and I had all of the ingredients. So I'm just sauteing my onion in some olive oil and then I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic. Two bell peppers chopped a red and a green and then I called for half a cup of red wine and then later on a half a cup of water. I had some beef broth, that's what I'm going to use, and then I called for a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes and a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce, so I just kind of took what I had from my pantry, I'm going to make it work. Um, two tablespoons of soy sauce, two cups of elbow macaroni, and then it said two whole bay leaves, optional, um, dried oregano, dried basil, and crushed red pepper. So I'm also going to put a little bit of basil and parsley in, those are kind of my spices that I like to use a lot. So anyways, the onion's looking pretty good. And I'm gonna add the garlic and then we'll get this all into one pot. Um, the other thing too, this is gonna have to, like it says it's supposed to simmer for 30 minutes and I didn't realize how long this was gonna take because I read the instructions and I thought it only had to cook for the 10 to 12 minutes. So I definitely, um, I'm not doing this as long as I would have liked. I should have made this earlier in the morning. So anyways, I just added my peppers. It says to saute them for uh, two minutes. And then once you do that, you're supposed to add your ground beef. So one pound of ground beef. I just went ahead and added this in and then you just go ahead and you cook the ground beef with the vegetables until the beef is cooked all the way through. So I am once again using my Dutch oven. Um, I really would like to use the skillet that I bought at Costco. That's the only complaint I have about those is that they didn't have lids, but we'll make it work. So anyways, the beef is now cooked down and I didn't brown as much at the bottom as I thought it was going to, probably because I'm in a little bit of a hurry and I didn't let things sit as long as they normally do to kind of like brown up a little bit nicer. So I just took a little bit of the um, beef broth thinking it would deglaze it, but honestly, I don't even think you needed the broth at all in this recipe. So now all I'm gonna do is um, add the tomatoes, the tomato sauce, the bay leaves, the oregano, basil, all of the different spices and the water to the pot. I forgot to add the water, but I added it later on and I used broth instead. But honestly, I think you could skip that extra liquid. I really didn't find that it needed. But like I said, I also didn't cook it as long as I normally would have, but the extra liquid definitely did not hurt it. So I'm putting it in the soy sauce and then it just says place a lid on the pot and allow it to come to a boil. Once boiling, turn it down to low and let the sauce simmer for 30 minutes with the lid on stirring occasionally. So. Um, yeah, I really think that this is something that would be great to cook on the weekends. I personally find that these types of recipes taste better the longer that they sit, especially with the pasta. And this is really easy to heat, reheat on, um, you know, just with a skillet, or you could just go ahead and put it in the oven again. And you could always, um, do a little bit of prep on the weekends to help yourself. And I think this is one of those meals that really goes a long way especially with the pasta using two cups of the elbow macaroni. I was a little bit um, scared that it was going to be a little bit too much. But then when I saw how much everything kind of amounted in my pot, I'm like, I think it's going to be good. So I did add a little bit of salt and pepper just because I felt like it needed a little something still. And even when I served it, my husband asked if I put salt and pepper in it. So I added some more salt and pepper whenever we were at the table. So everything is pretty much good to go. I'm going to get everything cleaned up. So there we go, it's boiling and simmering away. I only let it sit for 15 minutes. I really wish that I could have let it sit a little bit longer, but it just would have been too late of a dinner for us. And then you just stir in the pasta and it says um, till tender, about 10 to 12 minutes. I only did it for 10 and I definitely think 15 would have been the best because I felt like the noodles could have absorbed a little bit more of the liquid, but 
I'm doing what I got to do to get dinner on the table tonight. So anyways, I wanted to go ahead and get Andrew served up so it could cool down a little bit. And then um, I just let it sit for a couple of more minutes, but it thickened up pretty nice. It definitely looks very hearty. Let me know how you make goulash. Is this something that's very common where you live? And I definitely think a little bit of tomato sauce would have added a lot of flavor to this. So it's definitely not a fancy meal. It was a very delicious meal. And I just had some of the Pillsbury like country biscuits and I wanted something kind of bread to go with it because it was raining all day and it was very chilly. And this is definitely a comfort meal. So this is how I did. Do you usually put something on top? It's really hot, um, but we liked it. And all of these meals heated up really well whenever we had them for leftovers. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I know I've gotten feedback in the past that you enjoy whenever I share, whenever I change things up. You know, sometimes the recipe isn't always as great as I thought it was going to be, or also to give you little tips or tricks to make things work better for you in the kitchen, whether it be organized with cooking or maybe something you should change in the recipe. And I think that's one of the things that I really enjoy about cooking is it's kind of a little bit of instinct, you know, going with what you have, making it work. Like I feel like you can fix an oopsie in cooking compared to baking. Baking is a little bit more of a science. And I think my goal by doing these types of dinner videos is to get you more comfortable in the kitchen and don't feel like you have to follow a recipe exactly. Like really make what you have work for you instead of making like special shopping trips to buy one or two ingredients that you might never use again. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you're comfortable and also subscribe if you are new. So thanks for watching everybody and I'll be back soon with some more recipes to share with you.